In this video for Math 94, we're going to talk about completing the square and using factoring or the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. This is like problems 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8 on homework 6, which covers section 9.3 to 9.4. So, let's talk about this idea of completing the square. Completing the square creates a perfect square trinomial on one side of the equation. After doing that, you can use the square root property to help you solve for x. Easiest to see this by an example. In this example, you'll notice we have x squared plus 22x equals 23. To complete the square, the first thing you have to do is make sure that the constant term, the term without an x, is on its own on one side of the equation. Then, you need to make sure that the leading coefficient, the number in front of x squared, is 1. If it's not, you should divide it out. That probably won't happen too often on the homework, but if there is a number here instead of 1, you need to divide each term by that number. We don't have either of those situations, so we're going to do the completing the square process. What we do is we take the coefficient of the x term, which in this case is 22. We take 1 half of 22, which is 11. And then I take 11 and I square it, which is 121. Now I'm going to add that to both sides of the equation. Okay, 23 plus 121 shouldn't be too hard. If you do a little arithmetic there, that's 144. Now, if we factor this, you can use any method of factoring you like. You'll notice that I have x squared as my first term, so I need an x and an x. And I need factors of 121 that add up to 22. Turns out, not surprisingly, that that's 11 and 11. And this, of course, has to be plus and plus because we need positive 22 in there. Now, if I rewrite this this way, you'll notice that this is a perfect square trinomial. Now we can use the methods that we used in the previous section to complete this. Take the square root of x plus 11 squared. Take the square root of 144. As we talked about in the last section, don't forget your plus or minus. That gives you, I'm going to move up here, x plus 11 equals plus or minus 12. So there are two solutions, x plus 11 equals 12, or, move this over just a little bit, x plus 11 equals minus 12. Solve each of these by isolating x, subtract 11 from each side, so x equals 1, subtract 11 from each side, so x equals minus 23. So your solutions are 1 and negative 23. And you can check those. Um, so that's kind of an um, interesting application of way to solve a quadratic equation by using this completing the square. It will always work. Sometimes, though, it's a little difficult. But here's a review of the process. So to complete the square on the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, we move the constant term if necessary. So you have something that looks like this, ax squared plus bx equals c. Make sure the leading coefficient is 1. Otherwise, divide each term by the leading coefficient. Take half of the coefficient of x, square this, and add that to both sides. Then factor the left-hand side. It should be a binomial squared. Then take the square root of both sides, and don't forget the plus or minus sign, and solve. So let's see if we can apply this to a problem that I have on this next page here. See if you can do this problem. You might take a moment to pause the video at this point to solve it yourself. Then continue when you are finished. Okay, you'll notice that the constant is on one side by itself. 
and the leading coefficient is 1. So I'm going to take half of negative 11. Now, yes, I know that's negative 5.5, but I prefer to use fractions because if I take negative 11 and square it, that's easy to do, 121 over 4. Now, this gives me x squared minus 11x plus 121 over 4, so I'm going to add this to each side, equals minus 18 plus 121 over 4. Okay. Now, minus 18 plus 121 over 4. You might not know what minus 18 times 4 is, but if you multiply minus 18 times 4, you get 72. So minus 72 fourths plus 121 over 4. So again, just leaving this as a fraction, 121 minus 72 is going to give me 49 fourths. Okay? That's very nice. Now this one can factor to x and x. And this is going to be 11 halves. You'll notice that's the same value that I got here. And it's going to be minus, because this is negative in here. 11 halves times 11 halves gives me that. And 11 halves x plus 11 halves x gives me 11. So that's going to give me what I want as my perfect square trinomial. Now I have this written in a form where I can take the square root of both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus. Forty-nine fourths is seven halves. This is x minus eleven halves. Move that up a little. Come over here. That gives you x minus eleven halves equals seven halves, or x minus eleven halves equals minus seven halves. Add eleven halves to each side. So x equals 11 plus 7, which is 18 halves, which of course is 9. Add 11 halves to this side, minus 7 halves and 11 halves. I'll put a little line there so you don't get confused. Minus 7 plus 11, let's see, that's going to be 4 halves, right? And that's going to give me 2. Now, uh, so the solution is going to be 9 Two. Those are my possible solutions there. Now, you'll notice there are other ways to solve quadratic equations besides completing the square, but sometimes completing the square is a useful method to use. Let's look at another method that's a little more common to solve, and that's using factoring or the quadratic formula. Now, you might remember from a previous section that if you can factor this trinomial right here, then it's pretty easy to isolate each factor, set them equal to zero, and solve. The problem is you can't factor this one. If you think about this, there are no factors of two that add up to six. So what we use instead is this idea of the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula says that if you have a quadratic equation, you have leading coefficient a, b, and c, then the solutions are given by this. x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. Now, this will always give you the solutions of a quadratic equation. So in this case, you'll notice a equals 1, b equals 6, and c equals negative 2. So I'm just going to use this formula here. x equals minus negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 2 all over 2 times 1. Work from the inside of the square root out. Minus 6 plus or minus the square root of 36. 4 times 1 is 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. 6 squared minus negative 8 is 36 minus negative 8 or 36 plus 8 over 2. 
36 plus 8 gives me 44. And then we can solve this like we did those problems the other day, where we simplify first the square root of 44. That's 4 times 11. So I can take out a square root of 4 or 2. Then I can factor 2 out of the top. So let's just take out a 2. That gives me minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 11 over 2. And these cancel. So that gives me the solutions x equals 3 minus 3 plus the square root of 11 and x equals minus 3 minus the square root of 11. Now notice these are not whole numbers. These are not rational numbers. These are irrational numbers. These are called the exact answers. If you want an approximate answer, you can just go over to your calculator, turn it on, and you could write minus 3 plus the square root of 11. And that gives you minus 3 plus the square root of 11. If I round to the nearest 100th, it gives me about 0.32. So x is approximately equal to 0.32. And minus 3 minus the square root of 11 gives me x is approximately equal to minus 0 0.32, 6.32. So those are approximate answers. So these are the exact answers. And these are approximate. And just pay attention to what the problem is asking for when you know what answer to give. Let's try this one by the quadratic formula. You might want to pause the video now and then come back to it in a moment to um, help figure this out. Okay, in this case, A is 16, B is negative 8, and C is 1. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula. You do need to know this by heart, so I suggest writing it down every time you do a problem. So this is minus negative 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 squared minus 4 times 16 times 1 over 2 times 16. Okay, so that gives me 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 4 times 16 is 64 over 2 times 16. So this gives me 8 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 32. And I end up with 8 over 32, which is 1 quarter. Now, you'll notice this answer is rational. It is also a double root because I only got one answer here. In fact, if I go back to the original problem, I could have done this. I could have said, hey, let's try factor this. 4x and 4x, and 1 and 1, and it doesn't take too long to see that that's a correct factorization, which means 4x minus 1 equals 0, or 4x minus 1 equals 0, which gives you x equals 1 quarter, or x equals 1 quarter, which means you have a double root. This is a perfect square trinomial, and it could have been factored. So you don't have to use the quadratic formula. However, as the next two examples will show, the quadratic formula always works. So let's take a look at this one. 7x, x squared plus 7x plus 15 equals 0. Again, a equals 1, b equals 7 c equals 15. Writing down my quadratic formula. Plugging in. Let's see. b squared is 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times 15 all over 2 times 1. So that gives me minus 7 plus or minus the square root of 49. 4 times 15 is 60 over 2 times 1. Now, minus 7 plus or minus the square root 
49 minus 60, oh goodness, that's minus 11. Now, if you look at this answer, you know that you can't take the square root of negative 11. So there's no real solutions here. Now, it turns out, after the next test, we'll have a way to express this mathematically. But for right now, you should say no real solutions. Let's try this one. A little bit different. You might want to try this on your own. Pause the video. Come back to it when you're done. A equals 2. B equals negative 1. And C equals 1. So, x equals the opposite of negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times 2 times 1 all over 2 times 2. Okay, work out this. This is 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus, well, what do we have here? Looks like we have 4 times 2, which is 8 over 4. So that again gives me 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 7 over 4. So again, cannot take the square root of a negative number, so there's no real solutions. All right, one other point about quadratic equations. To solve a quadratic equation, you must have 0 on one side of the equation. So while this looks like it's solvable, it isn't at this point until I rewrite this so that 0 is on one side of the equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 3x to both sides. Because 2x squared and 3x are not like terms, put them together like that, equals negative 2. Now I'm going to add 2 to each side. Okay, and I get that. Now, why don't you take a moment to try to solve that using the quadratic equation. A equals 1, B equals 3, C equals 2. Let me write down the quadratic equation one more time. Minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2A. So that's negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2 all over 2 times 1, minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 8 over 2. And that one works out pretty well. So that ends up being minus 3 plus or minus 1 over 2. So that's minus 3 plus 1 over 2, minus 3 minus 1 over 2. Minus 3 plus 1 is negative 1. No, it's negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. Minus 3 minus 1 is negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. So there you go. So one last example, you might try this one. So remember, the first thing is to get everything on the same side, so that you have 0 on one side of the equation. 2x squared minus 28x plus 188 equals 90. Subtract 90. 2x squared minus 28x. 188 minus 90 is going to be 98. Now, this problem, you can make your life a little bit easier by factoring out a 2. You'll notice that the greatest common factor here is 2, so that's going to be minus 14x, and 98 is going to be 49. Now, if you look at this problem, you'll notice that this is factorable. So I'm going to choose to factor it this time instead of use the quadratic equation. This gives me this. This tells you, well, 2 times x minus 7 times x minus 7 has to equal 0. 2 can't equal 0, so either x minus 7 equals 0 or x minus 7 equals 0. I'm only going to write it once, so x equals 7 is my solution. I hope you have found this video helpful.